Koa, Acho, Amu, Coral. It is known by different names to different peoples throughout the world. It is a home and refuge for fishes, snails, algae, crabs, and countless other organisms. It provides human populations with sustenance, protection, and is an essential component to the traditional lifestyles and cultures of many Pacific Islanders. Marine communities in the Pacific Island network of U.S. national parks are made up of rich and abundant life. These outstanding, vibrant natural communities are some of the most ecologically important areas in the world. Coral reefs are centers of marine diversity and provide habitat to many different organisms. Due to their ecological, cultural, and economic importance, it is critical that the National Park Service collects scientific data on the current health and long-term trends of the park's coral reefs. To really try and track the subtle changes that are occurring over time so that we can pick up cues from various stressors. Corals face many threats including disease, contaminants, storms and tidal waves, alien species, sedimentation, coastal development, and population pressures. Many threats to the marine environment originate on land and most are associated with human activity. Coral reefs are strong early indicators of global climate change. For example, increased ocean temperatures contribute to bleaching, a process in which corals expel essential algae leaving behind white skeletons. If prolonged, bleaching kills the corals. Increases in carbon dioxide have resulted in ocean acidification, which inhibits corals from forming a skeleton and maintaining reef formation. Long-term monitoring of coral reefs is a priority for the National Park Service. And then by taking repeated measurements over time, we can see if there's any particular trend, whether it's improving, staying about the same, or actually declining. Monitoring is conducted at War in the Pacific National Historical Park, the National Park of American Samoa, Kolokohonokohau National Historical Park, and at Kalaupapa National Historical Park. Each park's marine area has been divided into 30 study sites, 15 of which are randomly selected. At each study site, one 25 meter transect is created at a depth between 10 and 20 meters. Once a site is located, observers descend below water and lay the transect line. Along the transect, a diver takes 25 still photographs from a perpendicular angle at a height of half a meter above the bottom. These images capture what that benthic community looks like at that point in time. The photographs are then later brought into the lab, analyzed, and then from there we can determine the different types of cover, whether that's coral dominated, algal dominated, in other words algae, or different types of macro invertebrates, large things like sea cucumbers, sea urchins, that all inhabit the bottom. And this enables us to really kind of capture at that moment in time what the benthic community is like. A second component of monitoring is called rugosity. Rugosity comes from the Greek word rugos or wrinkled and it allows us to capture the surface complexity of the bottom. And the idea behind this chain is as we contour it on the bottom, it gives us some index of how rough the bottom is because the amount of chain required to span the distance of that 25 meter transect will give us this nice index and tell us whether it's really rough, really smooth like pavement, or somewhere in between. And why this is important is because fish like rough environments. Coral is composed of tiny individual units called polyps. Polyps work together to create coral colonies, the basis of the reef. So here I'm looking at some coral settlement tiles to try and take a look at some of the processes that might be influencing coral reef communities over time, mainly coral reef reproduction. And what we do is we set these settlement tiles out once a year, pick them up about after four months or so, and see what's actually settled on them. With the information collected from monitoring, we are able to inform park managers about areas of unique or high biodiversity within the parks. We are also able to document long-term seafloor trends for climate change assessments and are better able to provide an early warning system for the detection of disease, bleaching, and other threats. We aspire to learn how our coral reefs are changing. This powerful knowledge is vital to the survival of our oceans and ultimately 
to ourselves.